Of course, there are other times when young men have to take these out over vast expanses of frozen sea, find best or we can pop this. Once again, these were borrowed from the bow fighter production line, and the aircraft was incredibly transformed into one of the great aircraft of all time. Once again, think about 20 years old kids. Sky with this, the Dreidecker, the triplane Fokker. Uh, smells which are just absolutely superb. But you wouldn't like to smell it too long. Coming from the left, during the 30s, air travel was uh, becoming a reality. They were not yet talking about air, tra air transport. People were traveling by air, 15 or 18 at a time, in these big machines, flying uh, at uh, today's highway speeds. 
not much faster. And uh, what Germans believed people, because it was quite expensive, would take them nearly a week to go from Frankfurt to Berlin. They were flying during the time. At night they were sleeping in And uh, very early the morning after everybody would board the aircraft again, the aircraft had been refueled and cleaned up during the night and matter during the night. And they would start again for uh, eight to ten hours. Contemporary with the the aircraft came of age very, very quickly with some very talented designers. France made aircraft prior to World War One, And then Newport 11, known as the Bay, Bay was powered by an 80 horsepower of our own engine. It was known as the Sesquipedal plane with a much narrower cord lower wing. That was so successful, but very lightly armed, that a larger version was developed using the 110 horsepower Lerone engine and that became the Newport 17. Today in front of us we have a Newport 17 currently being attacked by the Lerone and the French Force. The Battle of France was a defeat for the French armies and uh, what the Battle of Britain was uh, a resounding moment in the history of Great Britain. But nevertheless, during 1940, the Battle of Pilots, French fighter pilots flying this, the Moran 406. If war had started in 1936, the Moran 406 would have been the most royalties to Moran and Sonnier. Even in 1946, Moran and Sonnier would have been the we are being royalties by uh, Hotels, and all the American manufacturers because the sliding canopy was their uh, invention and was uh, the Moran 406 designed in 1946. This is the with the final suite of 12. 900 dollars for our engine. It was some of them. Some of the French pilots, most successful fighter squadrons of all time, the Normandy Yemen. The name of the squadron given to this uh, volunteer squadron was Normandy. That was a tradition in the French, uh, free French, saying that uh, all the squadrons are to be christened after the province of France. And so, uh, the Normandy pilots at low altitude, these were deadly machines against the Messerschmitts on the front And uh, of course, when going up above, uh, let's say, 10,000, 12,000 feet, uh, the yaks weren't good anymore. But on the eastern front, and this brings us 1945, end of the war, start of peace, and rebirth of commercial aviation. And this is near Djibouti, between Djibouti and Aden, over the Red Sea. At the time, we were already saying, well, you know, the DC 3s and all their aircraft. We're still saying the same things today. Now, that is, I have to say, this is a, an unashamed hint. That is one aeroplane I would absolutely dearly love to fly. It's easy. Come on. This is the thing when you fly one. and 70 miles per hour at least. Tailwind of course. Well, if you, once you get the trick of flying the DC-3, it becomes very smooth, becomes a delight to fly, very precise aircraft. You can land one in 
well, 1,200 feet if you know how to do it without using the brakes. But of course you have to, well, you have to work at it. And in fact, it's in the VA. Managed to reduce. It was one of the, well, it was one of the aircraft that won the war. Isn't that beautiful?